this the right question that we are asking, or do we have to reframe the question? Like how does an insect see the world? How does type of tree senses its environment and its relationships with the fungi world? Who is this planet for? Are we being honest enough in how we are declaring the things that we're doing? Welcome to Futurium, welcome to Arab Explorers. We don't know for sure what regenerative design is about. We invited people who know slightly more than us, hopefully, I think they do, to share knowledge and to discuss and to explore jointly what regenerative design means. The fundamental issue that we have at the moment is that we only have one planet and we have an increasing population and the patterns of living that we've adopted in terms of consumption and urbanization mean we're already using about 1.7 planets a year. We need to find a new way of designing that first of all restores the planet and then moves to a new paradigm where design is about enabling people and nature to coexist. We depend on those natural resources, on the biosphere, on our life support system. We have to account for the natural capital in, in our economic system and we do have to protect first of all and then restore or regenerate ecosystems and their services or nature's contribution to people. The key principles of resilience are diversity, redundancy and then managing connectivity in the right way. And we need to reduce cities' footprints in the first stage, regionally and globally. And part of that can obviously be done through circularity, reusing, recycling, upcycling, and so on. I think it's very relevant, the idea that we have uh, of nature and how it should be implemented in the future in our system, cities particularly, to conceive it as an ecosystem. So we need to conceive cities in a, in a different way and to approach cities in a different way from what we did in the past, in the recent past. And again, the focus between human beings and nature and the relation between these two key actors are actually, should be the drivers for regenerative design. Regenerative design is a relationship with nature, but it's also a relationship with yourself, and it's a relationship with the people around you, the communities, and of course your kids and your grandchildren. Now, this is really important. We need to do some prototyping, large scale, of what we think maybe will work, and we will not keep to the codes and all the standards that we made in the industrial world. It's something new, and then we can say, if it's working, let's then scale it. Today made it very clear for me that in politics you have to make it possible, but it's actually the designers who have to take over and make the impossible real. I think it's really clear that if we're going to deliver regenerative design, we need to leave places better when we finish working on them than they were before we started, both in terms of materials and energy and in terms of community and social value. We can also be a bit more courageous in saying no sometimes or challenging the briefs or the client ideas because we want a positive outcome at the end. Are we measuring stuff openly? Are we communicating with everybody in a way that um, allows that kind of honest discourse? Transparency is a big topic. However, when you work on certifications, it's often enough that you're asking very um, you know, specific questions that is something you don't want to share. Regenerative design also has to make sure that we all, within our society, but also across societies, have um, at least similar opportunities. To me, regenerative is much more scientifically defined. It's not an interpretation, it is what we need to get the system back working again because it's not working at the moment and we are risking everything. We design for people, not for objects. The different presentations showed that there is yet quite a lot of interaction with nature which we don't really have in focus, from which we can learn and from which we can take benefit. Same thing applies 
to this planet. It is extremely complex, it is extremely valuable and it's extremely intelligent because we are trying to copy what it does by its own nature. It provides all that solutions. If we work with living organisms, we have the amazing opportunity not just to decide on the materials, but also to decide where they come from and to help design these ecosystems that supply these materials. I am hugely inspired by these presentations because these are glimmers of a future that we might have. We have to start thinking from ourselves, so how do we reduce also our consumption and, and it, it already changes a lot. We need more um, speedy experiments, um, like um, yeah. it's uh, fast and dirty. Bring creativity to, to provide different solutions that are less harmful for nature, I guess. Yeah. It's good to, to, from our own perspective, see what are the lockings that we have to change our behavior, and from that we also have an input. It should also be better, getting better communicate that to other actors, whether it's clients or other design teams or even the public. We need to get better than that. And we need to remember that. Yeah. Technology has got us into this mess. Maybe it's arrogant to think that technology will get us out again. We should become part of the decision makers get at the forefront so yep. we can actually set the rules rather than following. I have learned a lot and I, I think that to me is a judgment of a good day.